Um, so we're going to get started. So this uh, webinar today will be focusing on uh, following the money in uh, campaign 2014 and beyond. Uh, the three main tools that we're going to be uh, f uh, featuring and focusing on uh, is real time, uh, additionally with uh, alerts, and Influence Explorer and Scout. Um, and just quickly around the table, we have uh, Bob Lannon and Lindsay Young from our labs team. Uh, we also have Jacob Fenton and Bill Allison from our reporting team, as well as uh, Adam McKinder and myself uh, from our communications team. So there's a fair amount of people here to help you answer any questions that you have. Um, and um, we're just really excited to be doing this uh, partnership with INN uh, and providing these trainings to help reporters and journalists uh, from, from across the country to really better uh, utilize our tools and resources that we make free and available um, and also identify best practices or you know, even tips on how we're using it in our reporting team on how to maximize the data and information from our tools. Uh, for folks who, uh, who are not familiar with Sunlight Foundation, I'm sure many of you are, uh, we are a nonprofit that's based out here. Um, in uh, Washington, D.C., um, and we focus on transparency um, as well as open data and open government issues, and, uh, and a big part of that is also unlocking uh, campaign finance data, and that is why uh, we are here today. So with that, I'm going to pass this along to uh, Jacob Fenton, who's going to get us started uh, and talk about the real-time data that we have in our Influence Explorer tool. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Jacob Fenton. I'm going to try to share my desktop, um, and in a second, um, it should switch over. Um, I'm, I'm a reporter and, and a developer here at Sunlight, um, and I've been working on campaign finance stuff uh, for, for a while. Um, I'm going to assume that all of you guys uh, have varying levels of experience with campaign finance. Uh, uh, data and, and you guys all have different sort of needs, but, but they're all sort of connected because I, I, we're really aiming this at uh, members of the investigative news networks who are, who are sort of reporters uh, trying to dig into this stuff. Um, I, I've, I've been there and I approach this stuff uh, with that perspective. Um, uh, so I'm not going to explain too much about campaign finance rules. I'm going to assume you know some. We're always happy to talk to you afterwards about that. These rules can be quite bizarre. Um, and I don't want to get too bogged down in it. I'll mention stuff as it comes up, uh, but we can try to answer questions later or by email. Um, the, the one thing you do need to know about uh, campaign finance today is that today is a quarterly filing deadline. Um, so uh, there's, there are literally a thousand, thousands of filings that are coming in today, and, and I'll show you that um, shortly. Um, so I'm going to be demoing a site called Realtime. Real -time. Uh, it's actually, you know, at the default site, if I just, here, I'm just going to shorten the URL so you see what it is. Uh, realtime.influenceexplorer.com, and by default, it's showing us uh, a newest filings page, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that uh, in a minute. Uh, but first, I just want to say what the site is. You know, we branded it as real time because, uh, but, but, but that's not quite really what it is. Um, what we're doing is we are getting every electronic filing we can from the Federal Election Commission and processing it in real time. Um, but what that means is that we've accumulated a record of pretty much everything that the FEC knows about this cycle and only this cycle um, in our own databases so that we can do things with it. Now, um, a lot of the reporting public is interested in the newest things, and on a day like today, that's very useful, but uh, for folks who are investigative reporters, sometimes uh, it's not always the newest stuff, uh, sometimes it's more arcane stuff, and we can strip the data out in more interesting ways, and if you're interested in a more unique data set, contact us afterwards. Um, <clears throat> the other thing, uh, I should say is that, that we are using electronic filings. We only get excerpts of paper filings. The Senate all files on paper, so we don't say that much about the Senate here. Uh, there's summary information for them, but I'm going to sort of skip over a lot of Senate stuff. Um, finally, uh, we're subject, we're pulling in data from the Federal Election Commission, um, and as you may know, U.S. Uh, election law doesn't report everything that, that we might think of as being a campaign ad. Um, you know, to be reported to the Federal Election Commission. There's a lot of ads that appear to be campaign ads but aren't technically that. Well, we call that dark money. Uh, we have other tools that look at that, but we're not going to get so much into it. Uh, for now, I'm just going to concentrate on what we do know um, from the Federal Election Commission. Um, one of the overriding theories of this site is that we're able to kind of take information from FEC and put it together in ways that are, are more useful to you. Um, this is a page that is aggregating uh, just all the spending by races. Uh, I'm going to say there's, there's inside spending and outside spending is something that we're going to be talking about. Inside spending means 
money raised by the candidates, whereas outside spending means money spent by super PACs and other outside groups, maybe a, a nonprofit C4 group. And one of the things that, that we're proudest of is that we're able to pull that information together onto one page. Um, I'm just going to sort this uh, page by outside spending and show you that, surprise, surprise, uh, the North Carolina Senate race has the most uh, outside spending of any of the, the big races this year. Um, I'm just going <coughs> to just kind of click through this page to give you a sense of what's on the site. Um, we've got a listing of summary information and the candidates. We, we note that a bunch of folks have lost in the primary, and at this point it's just Tom Tillis and Kay Hagan who are left. Um, and, and we include candidate fundraising, candidate spending, outside spending, uh, et cetera, a lot of stuff. Um, we, we, th there's a bunch of stuff on this page uh, that, that we, you could talk to us more about, but it includes recent independent expenditures, which are uh, the technical term for outside spending. So for instance, uh, Page Communications uh, has paid for a $4,800 billboard advertisement uh, in the last few days. There's more of those. Uh, this is a summary of that information that sums up. So the biggest spender in this race is the Senate Majority PAC, uh, who's opposed uh, Tom Tillis to the tune of $5 million. Uh, there's a lot of, of groups who are playing in this um, as well. The thing that I want to highlight about this, about this page is that um, I can, there's this link that says alerts. Get automatic alerts whenever a candidate in this race files an electronic report or is targeted by an independent expenditure. So what that means is this alert fires not whenever one of the candidates files a campaign finance report or whenever somebody else files a report saying, hey, I just dropped a million dollars running an ad against Kay Hagan or, against, uh, for, for, or for Tom Tillis. Um, it's a good way to pay attention to races. You know, this, the race is getting a ton of attention, um, so it's, it's perhaps not as useful here. Um, but, but if you are somebody who's covering six or seven different races, I've found it a useful thing to do. Um, I'm just going to click through uh, some of these pages to show you a little bit uh, of what's on them. Um, this is Tom Tillis. Um, he's a candidate for the U.S. Senate. Um, one of the things that I want to highlight um, is that uh, there's a listing of authorized committees. Uh, this is sort of arcane, uh, but several, several of these candidates have multiple committees. Um, it, it's important to keep track of, of which committee is which. I think Carrie Bentivoglio, or the reindeer farmer, uh, has several, several committees. Um, if you click through to one of those committee pages, there's, this is now a page that's devoted to the Tom Tillis Committee. Um, and one of the things that we try to do is make sure that you can get back to the source. So if you click on this, you can see the filings on the FEC's website. Um, this is, a, this is a, a Senate race, so we've just got this paper filing link, so there's not a huge amount of detail, okay? Um, I'm not going to show you uh, too much on that particular filing, um, so that's going to bring us back to an FEC page. Um, what I want to show you next, I'm going to show you sort of these summary pages that kind of sum up, um, that was a race page. Um, those are pages that are aggregated by an entire uh, campaign, um, but, but uh, I want to show you uh, uh, a, a simpler way or a different way of getting at the same data. Um, this is the home page that I showed you first, and this is filings at the top. Um, you know, all the, the aggregated information I showed you is, is made up of individual filings. Um, so, so different filings do different things. I'm, I'm not going to explain all the, all the details, but today is a deadline. So, so right, right now I'm on the newest filings page, and I, I just haven't actually entered anything, right? There's all these drop-down menus that I could mess with. Um, and it's just showing me a feed of um, the newest filings that have come in. Um, this is often, uh, the, the, on a filing deadline like today, this is the thing that I'm often looking at. Um, I, I, I would set the period here to be, you know, second quarter, the year to be 2014, because I know that that's the filing that's due today. And just by setting those two menus and clicking filter filings, um, I get, you know, 2,600 results. Um, now, to be honest, I really don't care about most of these uh, packs because they're not really doing much. So I'm just going to set $1,000 into the minimum there, and all of a sudden uh, I'm down to 1300 One of the links right here I want to highlight says uh, download a CSV file of all 100, uh, 1326 results. Um, as long as you have less than 2,000 results, we allow you to download a CSV file of them. Um, and uh, there's all kinds of interesting things you can get by looking at the CSV file. Um, you know, today is a quarterly filing deadline, but sometimes it's not, it's not just uh, the quarter, not, not the most recent results you want, but instead the results of the entire uh, cycle. So we consider a cycle to have begun at the start of 2013. I'm going to click on this PAC summaries page, and it looks a lot like the newest filings, um, but the difference is that uh, it's pertaining to the entire cycle. So instead of saying this is a second quarter filing, for instance, it's saying uh, this is everything that's happened to date. Um, so if, if I just search, search 
uh, by total amount raised and filter. Um, let's do it. Um, oh, right, we got, sorry. That, every so often there's some crazy people who file filings that are obviously false. That's interesting. <laughs> Uh, all right, so this Mercer for President guy is, I, I think he, this must be something that's either an error or, um, but, but sure enough, we can see all the big, the big uh, uh, committees that we're familiar with. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I'm often most interested in um, is, is super PACs. I'm going to exclude uh, super PACs right now. Um, I say, so I say not including uh, super PACs and, and fill this by total raised, um, and I'd see uh, you know, sure enough, the Senate Majority PAC, PAC has raised a huge amount of money. I could click, click here uh, to see a little bit more about them. But instead, I want to highlight, uh, you know, some of the most interesting stuff that's happened today. So I'm going to go back to the newest filings page, um, and I'm going to apply a more interesting filter. I'm going to say that I'm going to look for uh, super PACs, not including hybrids, um, and I'm going to look for uh, second quarter filings. Um, and I'm going to say, let's, let's look at stuff that's landed today. Um, so, I, actually, and, that, and that's the default sort is newest, newest to oldest. I'm going to just look at how much has been raised by super PACs that have reported raising money. Well, you know, I look at this stuff a lot, and I'm not familiar with unlocking potential, uh, so I'm going to click on them. Um, you'll see that they raised $1.2 million, um, or 1.1, I guess. Um, you'll notice, too, that this is the only filing that we have on record for them. So this is the first time they've filed. I'm going to click on this and just sort of see, all right, who, you know, what have they raised? Uh, wh 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 where's their money coming from? Um, so this is a donation uh, from this guy, Mike Murphy, El Dorado, Arkansas. It's dated, uh, what, the last day in, of June, so the last day of the second quarter. Um, it's half a million dollars. Uh, so there's, there's a filing from Mike Murphy and this, this person, Sidney Murphy, uh, both of whom are from El Dorado, Arkansas. Um, so just, I'm just going to stop right here and say, um, you know, this is like interesting, right? Just by looking at, by sorting for the biggest super PAC filings, like here's a donor who I'm not super familiar with, uh, and uh, who who uh, we just turned up just by sorting this stuff. Um, so I'm gonna uh, next um, uh, turn this over to to Bob Lannon. And before oh. you hand it over, uh, Marjorie had a quick question, um, and she said it was a little confusing because you said it was excluding super PACs. It looks like you we're including super PACs. Can you just clarify? No, I said it was excluding hybrid super PACs. Oh. Hybrid super PACs, also known as carry committees, are these PACs that can both act as a super PAC and not as a super PAC. And what you'll see is that um, this one PAC, Act Blue, which is really a pass-through mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for Democratic donors, um, what you get is that you, you see most of their money. I could actually just do the same search. Uh, I mean, I, I advise you to just do the same search with that included. Um, but basically, hybrid super PACs kind of confuse the issue. I mean, there are some hybrid super PACs that, uh, that are actually quite important. Um, but what, what I'd say, too, is that uh, there's a bulk data page. If you go to the, the downloads page, um, the other way to get at this is the sort of super PAC contributions file, mm -hmm. and that's just a large file of these things. If you're, if you're looking to cut across, you know, how much has been raised by, by super PACs and hybrid super PACs, um, that's like a file that just line items of the biggest contributions, and that's another way we could get at this the single large contribution that's come in recently. Uh, but I think I should probably let Bob talk a little bit, sort of continue, continue the story of the Murphys in El Dorado, Arkansas. Okay. Give my background. Hi, uh, my name is Bob Lennon. I'm the lead on the Influence Explorer project here at Sunlight. Um, the I Influence Explorer is uh, real time is one of the uh, one of the two recent additions to Inf Influence Explorer, and is uh, um, our new new one of our newest explorations into uh, pulling in influence data uh, it, it, at or near uh, real time. But the larger site. Uh, for Im the larger site is aimed at marrying disparate data sets from different avenues of influence uh, together to make them searchable by the entities that are involved. So um, when we look a little bit more into uh, Mike Murphy uh, of El Dorado, Arkansas, um, uh, one of the first um, articles that comes up is actually about, uh, I believe, is his, uh, his father, uh, Charles uh, Murphy. Um, uh, and the Murphy family is a, a very wealthy family in uh, El Dorado. 
uh, and owns Murphy Oil Corporation. So now that we have uh, a little bit more information about him, uh, we can use Influence Explorer search to find out what kinds of uh, political influence Murphy Oil Company has been engaged in uh, in the past. So if we search Murphy Oil, uh, we're taken to a page that's dedicated uh, um, to, to Murphy Oil at, uh, on Influence Explorer. Um, as you can see, uh, if you look at the menu on the left-hand side here, uh, Influence Explorer has found instances of Murphy Oil showing up in different influence-related disclosures uh, in campaign finance, lobbying, regulations, uh, um, EPA violations, and uh, advisory committee membership uh, uh, posts. So when we uh, look at this, we can get uh, a bird's eye view of their history of campaign finance. And this is over all uh, cycles. So we see uh, that their split is, uh, you know, uh, about 75% uh, Republican. Uh, they spend mostly at the federal level. Um, and the data that we're looking at here for campaign finance is a combination of data from the Center for Responsive Politics, also known as OpenSecrets.org, uh, and also the National Institute for Money and State Politics, uh, or FollowTheMoney.org. So um, we, if we'd like to uh, look uh, more closely at this campaign finance data, we can scroll down to the bottom of the campaign finance mm -hmm. section, and there's always a link you for your to the itemized transactions uh, for the uh, organization or person that you're uh, uh, looking at. So here we see uh, lots of, you know, lots of uh, um, Murphy's uh, <laughs> uh, people who have listed Murphy Oil Corporation as their, basically their employer, uh, as the organization that they're associated with. Um, so uh, as we go down, we, you know, we can, we see there was uh, over a thousand records of um, different um, contributions. And if we'd like to dig into the details of, of their giving and, you know, who was received from them in different quarters, uh, we can download this data and, um, and save it to our, uh, uh, you know, or open it in Excel. And here we have uh, just just uh, tons of data about um, the Murphy people who have listed uh, or mentioned Murphy Oil in their um, political giving. So this is something that you can you know pivot in lots of different ways. Uh, you can sort of you know explore this on your own and look at the different recipients and how much they've received. Uh, you can. Group uh, the contributor or the contributor um, this is a, this is sort of the data that you can look into uh, you know if you're if you're comfortable, uh, manipulating data in that way um, if you get to this point where you downloaded uh, sort of the transactional uh, data and um, need help making sense of it that's where you can absolutely feel free to contact me uh, and um, for for help interpreting it or for a custom uh, um, data poll that might be more fit to the story you're trying to tell. Um, so that's, uh, that's the campaign finance information, the further campaign finance information that we have for Murphy Oil. Um, but let's look at some of the other avenues of influence that we have documented here, um, because they're pretty interesting. Um, let's look at um, their history of lobbying, for instance. Um, so over over the over the years, this and this goes our, our lobbying data goes back to roughly 1999. Um, the and this is also provided by the Center for Responsive Politics, OpenSecrets.org, uh, and you can see that um, this, is a, this is a bit confusing because it says that the firm that they hired is Murphy Oil. Basically, they lobby for themselves, um, and the you have a number of names of the different lobbyists that. Uh, that have um, uh, lobbied on behalf of them, and the issues that they lobby on, uh, unsurprisingly, fuel, gas, and oil, energy, and nuclear power, natural resources, environment, um, uh, because they are a, um, uh, you know, an energy-related uh, natural resource uh, company. Uh, you expect to see these things. You can also see specific bills that they've uh, lobbied on. 
So, um, and you know, clicking through to any one of these will take you to uh, Sunlight's Open Congress tool, which will give you more information about that bill. Um, the uh, uh, moving further down, we can look at the regulations data. Um, so this uses our this uses the Sunlight tool docket wrench uh, to show documents that have been submitted by the organization or times that this uh, organization was mentioned in other document text. Um, so interestingly, very recently, um, they submitted uh, um, comments to the uh, State Department uh, on the Keystone XL pipeline. So if we wanted to look further into this, uh, we could click through and be taken to Sunlight's docket rent site to see, um, to see all comments submitted uh, uh, on the um, impact statement for the proposed Keystone XL pipeline, uh, or we could look at the document that they submitted directly, um, so we can actually see, you know, what they're what what they're talking about here. Uh, finally, uh, the um, an interesting angle for Murphy Oil is their uh, advisory committee membership. Uh, so the Department of Energy's uh, National Petroleum Council has two members on it that are uh, associated with the um, Murphy Oil Corporation. Um, uh, looking at the, as sort of an update, because uh, right now our advisory committee data basically goes up through 2011, some 2012, uh, but um, uh, we can go to the MPC's uh, site and check, and, and we can see that Claiborne P. Deming is still uh, a, a member of that of that uh, advisory committee, um, the, uh, and currently listed as the chairman of the board of the Murphy Oil Corporation, um, and uh, and so you know now we have the name of an individual. Um, Influence Explorer does a very good job of uh, tracking organizations and um, and political uh, uh, and, and political committees but also uh, does a pretty good job of, um, of looking at individuals. So if we take that, the name that we now have, uh, uh, Claiborne Deming, uh, and search by contributor, uh, sometimes it helps to take out the middle initial because it's not always included in the filings. Uh, but now we can see lots of, you know, lots of political contributions from this person. Uh, they are, um, uh, th th these are, you know, mostly two Republican uh, candidates and uh, the RNC, NRCC. Um, and um, further digging into, I, I, I went on and looked him up on uh, Wikipedia. It turns out uh, he's also the treasurer of the uh, American Petroleum Institute. Um, <laughs> who we see pop up almost every time uh, energy concerns are involved. Um, so now we have sort of the beginning of, uh, a, a, you know, a, sort of a deep dive on this one organization that showed up on real time uh, and with a little bit of searching, a little bit of investigation, we've been able to find connections throughout the historical data that's included on Influence Explorer uh, and, um, and really start to build context around the data that, you know, uh, as Jacob mentioned, just came in today. Uh, th this is a, this is, you know, uh, possibly a breaking story that, uh, that this significant player in, um, in energy people on advisory committees um, uh, and uh, very opinionated about the Keystone XL pipeline has just uh, started a, a new super PAC. Um, we, we might expect to see uh, advertising from them or more money spent in, in certain races uh, to influence uh, the debate over the issues that they care about. Um, again, uh, this is something uh, that, there, that there's a lot of depth on the Influence Explorer site. There's a lot of breadth as well because we have lots of different data sets. Um, at, the, at the bottom of any section on Influence Explorer, you can click through for the uh, raw data. So same deal with uh, lobbying. Um, you can get lobbying uh, 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 filings, LDA filings for that um, group. And if there are 
if there's anything else that you'd like to look into uh, and are not sure whether or not you can find it through these tools, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to contact me directly, um, blannon at sunlightfoundation.com, or uh, talk to our uh, communications department who can often steer you in the right way. Great, and now we're going to turn this over to Bill Allison, who is going to give us um, a little bit more context uh, for, for these tools and also share uh, some of the stories that we were able to write uh, here at Sunlight Foundation with uh, the data and the resources available. Okay, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, real-time getting alerts and, uh, and Scout. Um, and one of the things I want to say is, you know, kind of to begin, I mean, I used to do this kind of money and politics work back in, uh, I started doing this in 1995, and today it's about 90 degrees here in Washington, D.C., and the way I would get all this information is walking around and metroing and cabbing in some cases, uh, for the budget allowed it, to like, you know, 15 different office buildings. And here you can get all this stuff on the web. And the great value of this is that you can background all of these different organizations uh, through using these tools and get some, some information on a company. I mean, I don't know about you. I mean, I've heard about Murphy Oil maybe once or twice before. And here I can find out what they're lobbying on, what their federal regulatory matters are, and uh, just a, a huge amount of information about that company just by looking at these different resources. And as a reporter, when you're working on deadline, it's nice to know you have a place to go to find out that information. And then if you're following something because it's part of your beat or yeah. part of your, you're covering a race, you're covering a committee, uh, you're covering a member of Congress, uh, you can use these tools not just you know, to look something up, but you can have them alert you. And that's through a system we have called Scout. And um, so uh, here is yeah. Lindsay Young, who's one of my colleagues, used to be in reporting, and somehow we let her go to labs. I'm not sure how that <laughs> happened. Uh, we have to get her back. But anyway, uh, why don't we take you through and uh, show, why don't we choose for a committee? I mean, why don't we begin with that? Um, uh, why don't we just do something really simple like uh, uh, American Crossroads? Um, sure. And the, the way you get to this page is you go to the real, uh, the real Time Influence Explorer, and the upper right there is a link that says Get Alerts About New Filing. So go ahead, uh, if you go there, and then you can choose different com committees to fo follow. And in this case, uh, you said American Crossroads? Yeah, or we could also do, um, and I'm the name, uh, this is the final we page. Just follow up with them. Um, unlocking? Unlocking, okay. yes, okay. unlocking, let's, yes, unlocking. Let's go with unlocking. I was thinking okay. uploading, and I knew that wasn't right. Okay, and unlocking <laughs> is close enough to, uh, yeah, to get us what we want. And so, yeah, uh, potential. Okay, unlocking potential go. pack. So if you go ahead and you click on that bus, um, we're going to uh, set this alert. Um, you can customize it depending how noisy you want. I want everything. So I'm going to go ahead and get that alert. And that's going to take us to Scout, which is, uh, another tool that we're going to show you. And I just say OK to that. Um, to Scout, this is uh, the Sunlight so, Foundation yeah. alert, to alerts tool. That, and it's great benchmark. for following uh, these committees, as well as some yeah. other things that we'll show you. Yeah. Uh, but to create the alert for unlocking potential, all we have to do is uh, click that uh, button right there, create alert. Um, and then there's, it asks for email address. Um, I am Lindsay or Elian at Sunlight Foundation. Um, feel free to contact me if you need anything. And then just sign me up. Oh, sorry, I already have an account, so um, I need to log in. So log in or sign up on the top right. Um, and then so you can just use the, um, the training account? Sure. Training? Yes. The hardest thing is remembering. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sites. The rest of it is, is really simple. That's all awesome. <laughs> Okay. So now I've uh, got the hard part done, and I have, uh, <laughs> I have an account. And then so I go ahead, and then I just create that alert. And, and What's great about this is that you can be pinged on your cell phone, you can get, uh, you know, by a, a text message, you can get it an email, and every single time this pack files, this, you know, organization files, whether it's a 24-hour report, an independent expenditure report, a monthly filing, every single bit of activity, uh, if the FEC files a request for 
information from them. Uh, this will show up. You will get an email and be paying, and we'll have uh, you know this in your inbox. So you, it's a really easy way to follow uh, a pack, and you can follow all kinds of other things as well using Scout. Uh, it has uh, a ton of different information. Here we're seeing. Um, so here's the feed, and you've got you know the unlocking potential pack, and it shows you the different kinds of forms that you will be getting. And those uh, F3, F3X, and so on refer to different types of uh, filings with the federal government, and I do not have them all memorized any are used to. Uh, but that can be a really useful thing. Uh, again, and like so whenever there's a new development, you are getting it, and we scrape the FEC site almost constantly, or we, we pull information from it constantly. Parking in high fold. And, uh, and Lindsay, the, the rest of the information on there, you know, we update it pretty frequently, too. Uh, I'm not sure if we uh, okay, so they're saying because they're, 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 they've actually got eight, they've got eight interns. You get it, and so you get uh, an alert. Parking? Um, and then the amount of time um, that you want to uh, email, you can, you can also change it so it e emails you immediately if that's up. Uh, what you're looking for. So again, to change that, you just click on change and then. Just been really busy with some. And uh, you'll get those on. Really quickly, quickly down there. So um, just right. from and this is a huge, hugely useful thing. And then yeah. um, and have a ticket, bring it in. Show you, like some of the other offerings on um, Scout. Um, why don't we just take a look at uh, Murphy Oil, which is the, of course, the interest behind this. No, no, no. Um, so you go into high school. Go into high school. Pack. Go to one of the, you have to go and up. And so, okay, so now one of the things you'll see, like if you, if you we go down, so this is just a search of, of across multiple databases or data sets that we scrape and pull in. So the first one are bills in Congress, and that's actually the bill text of legislation in Congress. And we're not seeing any bills, and this is, isn't all that unusual. It's not, you know, it's somewhat rare to see company names in legislation, although it does happen. Uh, we have court opinions. Sometimes these are, um, you know, references to other cases where they turn up. Uh, the first one looks like they're referring to back to a case, you know, to as a legal justification. The one below looks like it's part of uh, a decision. Murphy Oil, Shell, and so on is part of a big case, Ned Comer, Comer versus uh, Murphy Oil USA, Inc. Uh, so you can get the latest thing that's happening in the federal courts. And then we have federal regulations. And again, these are, uh, are somewhat, you know, critical to look at when you're looking at what companies are interested in. This one, the Plains Pipeline LP, which is a company that's asking to build a build and operate a, um, uh, I'm sorry, operate and maintain an existing pipeline facilities on the border of the U.S. and Canada that goes from Murphy Oil uh, to the international border, and so on. So this can tell you, you know, and a lot of times there will be lobbying and different kinds of activity around these kinds of things, and sometimes contributions to politicians. Uh, state bills, we actually have all 50 state legislatures uh, um, online and searchable format, but again, in bill language, it's, it's somewhat rare to see a um, Oversight reports, like, you know, inspector generals, uh, reports, inspectors general reports, uh, general accounting office, uh, and it tracks, you know, so have somebody looked into this, this company or uh, operation of this company? And then lastly, and this can be the most interesting, speeches in Congress. And in this case, we've got both, uh, Charles Grassley and John Boozman, two senators, talking about a staff attorney, a former staff attorney from Murphy Oil who may be a federal judge. And if you notice that they have uh, federal uh, court cases, you know, that makes uh, you know, an interesting question about somebody being nominated. So again, these can be really, really valuable things to flesh out a story and to look for details about uh, what's going on with a uh, particular company or a particular interest. And once you've done a search, uh, you can create alert, an alert off of that search. Um, so if you want to go, see going forward, uh, if Murphy Oil has anything coming up through those regulations or are mentioned in reports, you just, again, click Create Report, and that will And then uh, the one we just wanted to show you really quickly, you know, some of this stuff in context. And actually, this is really just looking at one side of the equation. This is a story that my colleague Peter Olson Phillips, who's a very good young reporter, did looking at, uh, you know, we've, we've heard this, this kind of distinction that there is the Republican Party wing, the establishment wing of the Republican Party. We saw it in the, uh, the race between, um, in Mississippi, between Thad Cochran and, uh, and, and Daniels. Um, and what Peter did was to kind of look at some of the bigger spending groups that are uh, on sort of both sides of the aisle, particularly like Senate Conservatives Fund 
and uh, um, the um, Club for Growth and some of the, the ones that are backing the insurgents and to kind of break down how they were spending, how they were faring in, the, in different um, races, and particularly races where outside groups were outspending the candidates themselves, which is a really interesting phenomenon that we've really only seen since uh, the Citizens United race. And so, you know, he put this together, he developed a, you know, we have some graphics showing, uh, you know, where the money was going, who was spending, uh, and, and I think what it shows is that a lot of times when you have these, you know, outside groups, you know, that the, the flood of money doesn't necessarily guarantee electoral success, uh, you know, for, for these groups. You can see that, you know, Club for Growth has really been, uh, had some futility. Uh, and this is actually one of the more interesting things about outside groups that we've kind of seen consistently going back to, you know, 2004 with the, all the groups that supported John Kerry is that, you know, there was a tremendous amount of, of kind of proto-outside money then. This is obviously before Citizens United. But there was a ton of 527 money supporting John Kerry. And a lot of times uh, the, the outside money does not end up swaying the difference. And, uh, and but one of the things to keep an eye on, though, is that you know, it seems that it's much more effective the closer to a candidate it is, that when you have folks who are, um, you know, that when you have like, the former treasurer uh, running the, the outside spending group, it seems like they spend a little bit more uh, effectively. But in any case, but this is, you know, really kind of showing that breakdown and, uh, and then Peter went on kind of through each different race and talked about, you know, who was involved and, and who the players were and how much was spent. And, uh, and then, yeah, I scroll down to that table. And so and that, you know, really kind of breaks it down in terms of uh, a concept that uh, Lindsay came up with, the return on investment for spending. And most of these groups are not, you know, having a great return. Uh, you know, obviously the most successful one there is the Ending Spending Action Fund, and number two is uh, uh, Club for Growth, which is, you know, uh, the former is a newcomer. Uh, we first really started spending in the 2012 election. The latter, Club for Growth, has been around for years. Senate of Conservatives Fund. I'm sorry, I haven't done too badly either. Okay. Amy. Um, so uh, before we open it up for questions, I just wanted to also um, thank Denise uh, from INN and um, um, also just give her a little bit of opportunity to talk about our, uh, our partnership here and why we're doing this webinar series. Um, and also actually just wanted to remind folks too that this is actually one part of a three-part series and that you can um, sign up for the, oh, what did I just do here? Um, you can sign up for the uh, other two uh, webinars here at training.sunlightfoundation.com slash events, and then you can read more about the other two. The next one is going to be next Tuesday on collaborative reporting tools, and then the following one is uh, on how to leverage APIs and data sets in your newsroom. Um, so Denise, do you want to unmute yourself, um, star seven? All right, yes, thank you. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone at Sunlight for putting these on. Um, it's a wonderful webinar. Um, I know that campaign finance can be kind of an overwhelming um, subject. You have a lot of, um, a lot of data coming at you. So um, our goal with these, uh, Sunlight has a lot of great tools to really um, help you find your way through that and follow the money. So, um, so that's what we're here for, to help you um, work on some stories um, when you're on deadline on the fly, um, but really also to help you um, dig a little deeper as well um, and, and make those connections and really follow the money in your races. So um, thank you everyone for being here. Again, um, the two upcoming webinars um, also can, um, can help you with uh, collaborative data sets next week. Those are data sets you're really not going to get anywhere else on um, political ad spending and on um, fundraiser data. And then um, the, the next one on the 29th is really geared toward newsroom developers. Um, so feel free to pass those along also to anyone else in your newsroom um, who would be interested in those. Um, we've had a great response so far. For th so thanks again for everyone for being here. Um, and I'll turn it back over um, to the presenters to take any questions. Um, so are there any questions? Um, so are there any questions? I was uh,
Find, find the, um, related, the um, related pack, related pack. Americans for Prosperity, Americans but, for I prosperity but I couldn't find the individual state organizations organization that they have broken down. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just yeah, I'm sorry. I just want to break it. it. I'm like, we're having an echo. Like we're having an echo. Can you, can you, Denise, can you uh, mute yourself? Uh, mute yourself. Okay, whoever was speaking, please try again. <laughs> okay, is that better? Yep, yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, I was trying to find the Americans for Prosperity individual uh, state PACs because they've had it broken down like that. But I wasn't, I wasn't seeing the it immediately. Hi, I can answer that question. Hi, I can answer that question. Yeah, it sounds like someone is. Yeah, it sounds like someone is. Echo. Um, but. Uh, the short answer is that uh, state state level campaign finance is not included as part of the real time um, uh, data set. Uh, uh, Bob can speak to what's in Influence Explorer, but real time is just focused on federal uh, people who who report at the federal level. Uh, right. So um, if you are to search uh, Americans for Prosperity on Influence Explorer, um, uh, sorry, there we go. Um, uh, you, yeah, you will see um, that most of the spending is at the state level, um, and you and so um, Influence Explorer. This is actually a decent um, uh, um, a, a point to mention that Influence Explorer is based on uh, the organizations themselves. So uh, both with Americans for Prosperity um, and also with some other organizations like Planned Parenthood uh, that have um, that organize uh, in, this, in a similar way that have different um, PACs for each state that they're uh, invested in. Um, you can see that um, they're uh, um, that they're transferring lots of money to America uh, for AFP Michigan and AFP Coalition. Um, so uh, we can still look at their recipients. Um, uh, but um, sort of understand them, you know, when we, when we go through and uh, look at the um, itemized data uh, and start to see, um, let's see, um, we can see uh, the, uh, the Michigan Ballot Committee um, and, um, you know, lots of, lots of uh, um, contributions to um, state level uh, uh, party Committees. Yeah, and I just to add the the data for the state comes from the National Institute on Money and State Politics, which is at followthemoney.org, and they're a great group and uh, worth checking out. We have another question on on the internet uh, from Isadora. She wants to know how can she find information for our previous election cycle? And Bob, since you already have the site open, maybe that's a good one to show. Sure. So um, uh, we could go back to. Well, we can stay with AFP, I guess. Um, uh, on any page on Influence Explorer, um, you can uh, you can go to this drop down right here uh, that currently says all years, uh, meaning that it's giving you the the data for uh, all the years that we have for this committee, um, and li and um, limit it just to one cycle. Uh, it's broken down by cycle, so um, two year cycles like 2013 and 2014. You can also add that filter to the search on data.ie. So if we just want to see um, that, uh, that, that committee um, in the two-year cycle of 2013 and 2014, or uh, probably you know, a, a more richer data set is 2011 to 2012, um, where we'll see you know, lots, of, uh, lots of other um, uh, contributions. Um, so that's two ways to do it. Either you can uh, filter um, from an organization's page, uh, or you can, so you can look at that data just for 2011-2012, um, um, or you can uh, add that filter to uh, your data.influenceexplorer uh, uh, search um, by adding the cycle filter. And then while you're on that page too, Bob, you can add another cycle too. So with that um, plus sign there, you can add, let's say you're interested in seeing, uh, you know, the, the cycle, right, it's 2003 to 4 and 2011 and 2012. Uh, and you can um, use I'm not sure that's well. going to add any, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're, in any case, they're going to be sorted by how recent, so. Um, but yeah, so that's a good question and uh, something that you can do on almost any page. 
Are there any other questions on, on the phone or on chat? If you have a question on the phone, feel free to unmute yourself by hitting star seven. And then um, just so we don't have an echo, just uh, star six after you're done to mute uh, your call. Uh, there's a question online about whether um, Influence Explorer's back end is open source. Um, everything that the, that, uh, the Sunlight, Sunlight Labs develops is open source. Um, you can find, so the, the back end for Influence Explorer um, is, uh, I guess I can, I can share again, um, uh, is at, uh, so if you go to our um, uh, GitHub organization, um, sorry, <laughs> my brain froze for a second there. And just for um, folks who are, you know, are, are wondering what open source means, uh, it just means that whether the code that it took for us to, to develop these uh, tools are available um, public and uh, free and online. So that's what Bob is uh, pointing out right now. That's right. So uh, the original uh, project um, uh, that this, for historical reasons, uh, Repository is called Data Commons. That was the one of the original uh, uh, projects uh, involved here, uh, and yeah. So all of our code is here for the back end. Um, the front end to Influence Explorer is is also um, is also available, um, but um, but is uh, in a separate repo that we call Brisket. Um, uh, if, if you need uh, any help navigating uh, our repos, uh, you can always. Uh, 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 find us on IRC in the Sunlight Labs uh, room on Freenode, or you can email uh, the the you can email any one of us or or uh, email um, the labs uh, contact list. Um, you can up in there. Can I share my screen. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, the, the next question I see. Um, is about uh, expenditures, um, and, and that's exactly right. That we spend a lot of time talking about contributions because uh, those get uh, a lot of the attention. But, I, but expenditures actually are really important. Um, I'm just going to pick um, uh, a pack that spent a lot of money. So I'm on the pack summaries page. Um, what's one like Senate conservatives? Um, Can you just zoom in a little bit? I'm just Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Um, so I'm on the PAC summaries page. I'm just going to go to the, um, I guess the Senate Conservatives Fund PAC. Well, I'm, it's, anyway, so this is the summary page, um, and there are oh. downloadable files that pertain to this to this PAC for the entire cycle. Um, so I can just download uh, a file of disbursements um, or of independent expenditures. Um, Independent expenditures are, there's a specific, we, we can talk more about independent expenditures later, uh, but disbursements tend to be sort of the operating expenses of running a, a political group, and in, independent expenditures are uh, campaign spending targeted at someone in particular. Um, so I could just download a file of disbursements for, for the 2013-2014 cycle. Um, additionally, you know, um, uh, we could see uh, the expenditures on any of these filings. This is the committee summary filings. I will just click on the most recent one, I could click on raise to see where the money is coming from or spent. So this is just a single, uh, the, the disbursements, uh, <laughs> all right, there's more than a thousand of these, so it's not displaying them, but I could download a file of these. Um, uh, and, and finally, so, so that, those are, are disbursements that are limited to, to a pack or to particular filing, uh, but there's also this bulk data download page. Um, and I mean, we also make um, uh, the entire list of Schedule B disbursements this cycle available. Um, this is fairly complicated stuff. There's, there's probably five million lines or something like that in here, um, and it takes a little bit of uh, kind of know-how to make sense of it. Um, but we put that up there because the, the Federal Election Commission does not make it easy to download uh, disbursements in bulk. Um, you can get contributions pretty easily, but it's, it's relatively hard to get disbursements. Um, so I would encourage you to look at disbursements um, and to figure out what you can about these committees on how they're spending their money. Um, and if you have more sort of uh, a more detailed request, um, please let us know. Are there any other questions? We have a couple of minutes left, and we definitely want to 
get as much feedback from everyone. I got you. Um, so feel free to just chat it into your, your sidebar uh, or just to unmute your phone um, by hitting um, star seven. Um, I'm happy. Um, so th th this is Jacob Fenton again. Um, in, in, in the, heart, the rush to get all this stuff done, I, I probably didn't do justice to the bulk data files that are available uh, from real time. Um, you know, the, the, the web pages are kind of useful for seeing what's going on, but for people who are really looking into what's actually happening, um, these are actually more useful. One of the things that, that we found some of the most useful or some of the most interesting stuff in has been in the Super PAC contribution file. Um, and there's a lot of boilerplate about what the heck that is, which I'm not even going to read. Um, but, you know, the other thing that's novel about Super PACs is that uh, they're allowed to take contributions from unions, corporations, nonprofits. You know, the, the way this is reported is not perfect, but this is a file that has just that information. Um, the thing that I will typically do on a filing deadline is download this file. This is the Super PAC contribution file, and I'm just looking at it in Excel. Uh, but I just do something like sort it by, um, I think, contrib by contribution date, right? So the most recent stuff is coming in, and I just sort of filter it by, um, I think, contribution amount. And if I just sort of say greater than uh, 50000 bucks, I should note that um, – I, I downloaded this file a while ago, so I think, I think the stuff we saw from Murphy Oil isn't in this yet. This updates every three hours or so. Uh, but in just looking at this, um, right, uh, I'm able to see pretty quickly, you know, here's jobs in progress funds, right, Westchester, Ohio. Um, you know, they've given, like, something like 640000 bucks on June 23rd um, to, who's this to? Um, To uh, CWA PAC, right? This is the what is it? Citizens for Working America. Citizens for Working America. Um, um, in, in general, you know, there's a lot. Like, it's interesting to look at campaign contributions, but but the real, the really interesting stuff to me are these sort of kind of weird C4 groups that are giving money, they're funneling money through things. Um, I think that there's a lot of sort of progress to be made just kind of following some of these otter contributions and just some of the, like the really, right? I mean, there's there's a lot of money buried in the sort of the, the like. $50,000 to $1 million range that no one's really writing about, and, and if you start kind of pulling at those threads, I think you'll get someplace interesting. Um, worth mentioning, too, that there are bulk data downloads for all of the other data sets on Influence Explorer. Um, could you just go to the data page real quick and show? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you click on data on the far right at the top of Influence Explorer, it'll bring you to oh, thanks, a page where yeah. if you click on bulk downloads, uh, Facebook button there. Um, uh, <clears throat> these bulk downloads are the, you know, the itemized uh, contributions, uh, uh, lobbying filings, um, uh, basically all of the different sections that you'll see on any individual's Influence Explorer page. You'll also see the bulk, uh, uh, you know, the line-by-line -line itemized uh, version here. Um, and again, uh, many of these, uh, many of these. Data sets are contributed by the uh, uh, Center for Responsive Politics. The state level uh, um, uh, versions are, are contributed by the National Institute for Money and State Politics, and uh, they, and you know they do a fantastic job. Uh, both organizations do a fantastic job of kind of taking the the raw data uh, that that Jacob uh, that, that Jacob has to um, fight with every day. Uh, taking sort of that raw data and uh, cleaning it, making and verifying it um, so that it's more aggregatable. Um, these are uh, also very large files, though. Um, most of them aren't going to open in Excel. Uh, so if you're um, looking at, um, if, if you're interested in an entire cycle or in multiple cycles and interested in all of the information, uh, you will need to you know, uh, uh, learn how to load them into into something like uh, possibly access or, or some or some kind of uh, database software. Um, we can uh, give you suggestions for uh, uh, some more user friendly uh, versions of software that you can use uh, to to browse through that. <laughs> there is one last question: uh, Is there a way to sort the data by geography? Um, it, depending on what you mean by uh, geography, uh, the, it, it's certainly possible um, through. Uh, so uh, it's certainly possible through data. Dot, um, 
data.ie to look at, let's see, let's uh, get rid of this, get rid of that. Um, it's certainly possible to look by state, um, by the recipient state or the contributor state. So we can look at um, recipients in, you know, Arkansas in 2011, um, uh, let's say for, uh, for the Senate in 2011-2012. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, I, I, I uh, limited this by the recipient state, could have also done it by the contributor state, uh, but the, the, there, there's a few other places um, that you can uh, limit your search, uh, but mostly that would be in the bulk download. So if you wanted to get down to, say, the city level here, uh, you would want to, you know, open up this kind of, uh, uh, you know, download the data from data.ie and filter on the contributor city or the zip code. Um, uh, so if you, if you have any other uh, uh, sort of geospatial needs, um, uh, definitely contact me uh, uh, and I can give you some different uh, strategies for finding what you might be looking for. Yeah, uh, and this is Jacob. On the real-time stuff, I mean, again, it, it's pretty similar in that it's, it's oriented towards downloading the data. Um, yeah, I mean, in general, the answer is download uh, a data, download the data, and you know, sort it in Excel or Access or you know, whatever database program you feel comfortable using. Um, uh, I mean, we, we have a single file of every contribution. Um, uh, this cycle, it's it's quite large, uh, and and there's probably an easier way to get to it, um, but you know you can you can bug us um, on that as well. But certainly the races page does let you filter by state on on uh, on real time, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Last call, we're a minute past our, the hour here. Um, and uh, uh, if not, I'm actually going to bring us back to the, the uh, emails page. So our emails are all there. Uh, we're here, uh, so just shoot us an email if you have any questions or um, any follow ups. And I know a couple of folks have asked, uh, we have recorded this webinar and we just need to clean it up a little bit and then we'll shoot it out and uh, send it to everyone who signed up. Uh, or um, uh, and wasn't able to join us today, but also everyone here uh, who's been with us for the hour. And feel free to share that uh, link with folks who you think might be interested uh, in, the, in the webinar we just did. Um, so thank you again uh, for joining us today and hope to see or hear and um, chat with many of you next week for our next webinar at the same time um, uh, next Tuesday. And, um, and like we said, uh, you can find the webinars on the website um, and that we've shared before. Um, it seems like there might be some folks who are having issues with it, but um, you can check it out on the Academy site. Sunlight Academy is training.sunlightfoundation.com. You don't need to put an HTTP, actually. It's just training.sunlightfoundation.com slash um, event. So thank you once again for joining us, and we'll have this information, all this information about signing up for the next webinar and the archived um, webinar uh, from today's session um, in your inbox by the end of the week. So thank you again, and have a great day.